Hello and welcome back to Assetto Corsa. Thank you very much for joining me in this video and today we're going to be looking at the Maserati Quattroporte GTS. This is another car in the bonus pack. In fact, I think this is the final car that I have to review in the bonus pack. Uh, if I've missed one, let me know. I might have to check that out, but we are going to be going into other reviews very, very soon, mod reviews, and of course I have to take a look at Laguna Seca. I haven't forgotten about that, but for now we're going to be looking at this Maserati Quattroporte GTS. This is a, a large saloon car. That's what it is. It's a luxury saloon car, but it is a V8 twin turbo. Um, if I just get the specs right, I think it's a 3.8 litre twin turbo v8 producing 523 brake horsepower at 6800 rpm or between 6500 and 6800 rpm and 524 foot pounds of torque between 2 and 4000 rpm and i think that translates to 710 newton meters if i'm doing my calculations correctly so 710 newton meters of torque or 524 foot pounds between 2 and 4000 rpm all that goes through and an 8-speed automatic tra uh, transmission. Now that is operated with paddle shifters in Assetto Corsa. Of course you do have the manual mode in the real car and that's exactly what we have here. It would be a little bit boring if it wasn't a manual mode car. If it just was completely automatic that would be really boring. And that pushes all the power down to the rear wheel. So this is a rear wheel drive car, which means that 0-60 is 4.7 seconds in this car can do up to 193 miles per hour. Now, you might be thinking with all that power and 193 miles per hour, it's, uh, it must need quite a push. And it does because it weighs 1,900 kilograms. That's 1.9 metric tons is what it weighs. And believe me, it feels it. And you're about to see right here that I feel it by with the amount of understeer I get, I am going to have a bop. There you go. That's actually the last bop I'm going to have though. But 1,900 kilos, that's what? Uh, for almost 4,200 pounds, I think. If we convert that to pounds, I think it's 4,200 pounds or 4,200. That's really, really heavy and it's a long car as well it's wide it's long it's not that high but it's definitely wide and long i mean i'm to you're talking like over five meters long uh, maybe f i think 5.2 meters long if i remember correctly or a bit over that and almost just shy of two meters wide that is really that is range rover width um, you took my I think the Range Rover Evoque is just over two meters wide uh, This is much wider than your average sports car much wider than or your average saloon car And obviously it's not a supercar. So it feel you do feel it. You definitely definitely feel it um, In a set of course it comes in a, in a variety of colors I've chosen this one with the red interior which you might get to see as I look around a little bit You might just see the red interior um, and it has a nice gray it's sort of classy, understated, classy uh, luxury saloon. In fact, you can see in the replay box that I have a deep red interior, which I kind of like. I do like that leather interior, but um, yeah, bring, moving on to what it's like in the set of course, are very quick on the specs today. There isn't much to say about this. Um, we'll start with modeling and texturing. Again, they're fantastic. I think this car looks very good, much better than the original version of the Quattroporte. That looked a bit, um, I don't know, bulbous maybe would be the right... No, that wouldn't be the right word. I suppose the right word would be a little bit bland. Yeah, this one's a bit bulbous. It's a bit really big, this car is. I think bland is probably the right word. So that one looks a little bit bland. This looks a lot more classy. I do like particularly the rear lights. The rear lights have been changed up massively and they look a lot, lot better. And I, li I like how accurate uh, Kunos always get their cars to real life. So this is fairly accurate. Inside, very, very nice as well with the texturing. Uh, we've got the we've got the tachometer, the speedometer, as you would normally as you would normally get. Uh, and in the middle, you've got a little bit of a computer which has got your speed. It's got some fuel information. Got what gear you're in, uh, the time, and everything like that is in the middle. Very very nice. Typical Maserati clock in the center console. You can just see that little oval clock if you look over just above my uh, or just to the left of the tire wrap. You can just about see that. So very very nice there as well. And of course texturing inside. You can see the carbon fiber. You can see the leatherish design. You can see that. Uh, you can see the red accents inside. Of course the red seats as well. 
which you do have different colors of if you pick different uh, colors of the car. I think they've got some cream seats. I think they've got a blue interior, black interior. So it, it does look pretty. It does look pretty good. I do like that. Moving on to sounds, it does sound pretty good as well. V8 engine, twin turbo. You can't really hear the turbo too much. Yeah, you really don't hear that turbo too much, at least from the inside. From the outside, there is a bit of a whistle, so it's pretty nice. But from the inside, it's pretty uh, well. You don't hear it at all really the gear changes are really smooth the sounds are good it sounds like a v8 from inside and outside it does sound um i don't know it, it does sound a little bit more muffled than i would thought would have thought from the outside but then again it is a luxury saloon car so i suppose it is going to be a little bit muffled and inside sounds yeah it sounds pretty realistic sounds pretty good to me nothing much to say on the sounds again it's not the best sounds but it's it's fairly good but certainly certainly not the best sounds that they've they've done uh, on the interior uh, on the exterior sorry it does sound like there's something missing on the interior it's okay it does sound muffled obviously it is supposed to be a classy car it's supposed to be a luxury saloon car to rival the likes of uh, for example a mercedes s-class or a bmw 7 series or uh, what other cars are we are we looking at um the Mes uh, not mercedes i just mentioned that the porsche panamera the audi s8 stuff like that that's what it's supposed to be looking to rival and honestly I've driven the Panamera I've driven the Panamera and the Panamera to me felt uh, surprisingly better than this car this car on the acceleration it's great it really is great on acceleration it's it's powerful it's direct and you've always got power you really feel that the problem with this car is it feels really bulky and that's that lends towards understeer. Obviously, it's a luxury car, so the suspension is quite dampened. The suspension is supposed to absorb the bumps as opposed to ride the bumps as much. Yes, there is a sporty aspect to it, but because of that and because of the the weight, the actual sheer size of the car, the engine's at the front, the sheer size of the car, you feel it understeer a lot, especially when you're off power. Once you're off power, you can just see here, I'm understeering around this corner, going to understeer around the next corner. What you really have to do is you've got to throw, try and throw this car into the corners. And even then, it just feels, it doesn't feel all too capable around tighter corners. It feels more, I don't know, it feels more at home go, coming out of corners where it starts to potentially you can get the back end sliding than it does going into corners. Into corners, it seems you really, really have to slow it down. There we go again, more understeer. Look at that. It's just really, really horrible to take it into a corner. Out of a corner, like I said, it's fine. It, it's really nice. As, there you go. You can even see I got the back out there. It's really nice out of a corner. It's just into a corner. I, I just don't know. I don't know what to make of it going into a corner. It doesn't feel great into a corner. If there was a car that had a characteristic like this does coming out of a corner, very controlled, heavy slides, but was more agile going into a corner, I think I would probably prefer it. Now, the Panamera doesn't exactly lend itself to that but the Panamera is a better drive I feel of the cars that I've driven um, I just feel that the Panamera is a better drive than this that being said it is a Maserati it's meant to have flaws that's what Maserati often do I think that the was it the Levante or something that Maserati made that big SUV that was a fantastic car surprisingly this I don't know I've always liked the Quattroporte in terms of general the general idea but I can't see I don't know it just feels too heavy it feels too heavy to have fun in something like a set of Corsa um, maybe on a normal road yes but on a circuit it's just uh, it's not suited to it it's it really isn't suited to a circuit it's not something you can take around a circuit no matter how fast it can go even if it could do 193 miles an hour so I'm going to have to give this car I think an 8 out of 10 particularly because I can't really tell whether it's got that dynamic steering mode that the actual car has as well so I have to take some marks off from Kunos for that but generally I think the car is an 8 out of 10 car on the physics it just it just feels a little bit off and generally I think the car is an 8 out of 10 maybe an 8 and a half out of 10 as you can see I am pushing my foot down just a little bit just to see how fast I can go didn't exactly get to the 193 but that's okay thank you very much for watching please remember to hit the like button if you like this video subscribe to the channel for more videos on Assetto Corsa leave a comment in the comments box below if you're watching this on Twitch thumbs up and a follow please that would be massively appreciated 
Uh, there you go, you can get a bit more of a view of the interior, which is very, very nice, very luxurious interior. I do like the interior, but like I said, this is more about driving, and this car doesn't drive as well as I would like. Last but not least, if you can afford to do so and are really interested, please do support me on Patreon. Link to that is in the description box below. I would massively, massively appreciate your support. It would help me out a huge, huge amount. Thank you very much for watching once again, and I will see you guys next time in Assetto Corsa.